Because the people that took them to the land, Joseph and the fathers, the sons of Jacob in that time, they knew who they were and they knew their history. In fact, Jacob knew himself so well that he told them, when I die in a foreign land, bring my bones and bury them in Canaan. Because he knew himself. But over time they had children and they didn't tell them the history. And because they lost connection with who they were and what their foundation was, they ended up in bondage. Intergenerational gap. Intergenerational gap. There is a big gap between the Moseses and the Joshuas. You know how I know? Because Joshua did not go anywhere that Moses was seated to give him courage. Is someone with me? Everywhere Joshua went in his time, Moses was there. That's why God said to him, just as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Because the two of them were one. I don't know who's listening to me tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. This race that we are running started with Adam and Eve. It moved on to Noah. It moved on to Abraham. Then to Isaac. Then to Jacob. And now to our generation. There is supposed to be a handing of a tongue. But if there is a breach, a break between the generations, we cannot hand them a tongue. That's why we have young people now rising and taking the place of a father. That's why we have young mothers. That's why we have young fathers. A 23-year-old boy being called by other boys, Papa. It's a killer of destiny. It's a killer of destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you are angry with me right now. We'll be friends by the time I finish. I want the fathers and the mothers now I'm talking to you in the land of Gambia to hear me out. It is important and it is critical to raise this generation of believers in our nation today. Because when people are misinformed and uninformed, it can lead to bondage. Not only bondage, it can also lead to the abrupt ending of this important race. We are called to run. Because people are not trained how to run. It's not enough to train our young people how to pray and fast and read the word of God. It is enough to train, it's also important to train them how things work. There's a, there's a man that I listen to all the time, to the Bismarck. He's a friend of my pastor. He preaches at my church all the time. And the first time I heard the story of Zambia, I heard it from Tudor Bismarck. When he shared that Zambia had copper mines, mines, copper, wealth. But Zambia did not know how to mine because the people lack skills. So they brought in investors, just like Gambia is being flooded now with investors. The investors came and they said, we'll take the mines and we'll mine it and we'll pay you back over X number of years. Because the investors knew that they would harvest that money in less than a year. But they gave them so many years that they would pay it back with so much interest. And when they took over the mines, they were able to pay it back in less than a year. So all the interest that Zambia was supposed to gather, they lost it. And now until today, those foreigners are harvesting the mines and making wealth for their nations. Why? unskilled people. Because their leaders, they are in the churches clapping their hands. But nobody ever told them they need to learn how to marry. So they pray a lot. Because Zambia is a Christian nation. But the enemy, the, an investor came and bought their wealth. Is someone listening to me tonight? Yes, how can a believer, a Christian nation, have unbelievers come from outside and buy your minds and your praying? Was there no prophet or pastor or apostle or evangelist in the land? No more. Hallelujah. You know why that happened? Because the church, we are happy to be powerful inside the church. 
we fight over microphones, we talk about who preaches better, we talk about who is not a pastor, who does not qualify to preach, we talk about who is not a good worshiper and who is the best worshiper. But everything ends inside the four walls. Everything ends inside the four walls. Hallelujah. So the baton of the Israelites was given to Moses. Moses ran a good race and handed it to Joshua to succeed him. Joshua ran the race, but he also came to a time he expired. He left a remnant of elders, elders in the land, and those elders failed. They failed to pass the baton. They dropped the ball because there was an intergenerational gap between the young generation of Mo Joshua and the elders. So the elders could not connect to the young. So they could not hand the baton. The baton dropped in the middle. Who am I talking to tonight? Who am I speaking to? So he took an entire one generation, a remnant, to destroy an entire nation. So what am I saying? Unless this generation is raised well, I'm speaking to the fathers and the mothers of the land, unless the past errors are corrected, the correct errors need to be corrected. Gambia, the leaders in this nation, need to check themselves before a mirror. Because you here sitting are their responsibility. And if you're coming and shouting for three days that you're going to go out and take the city, and there is no elder to lead you and show you how to go, when you perish on the way, they will account for your life. Because they are supposed to lead you. They are supposed to train you. They are supposed to correct you. They are supposed to usher you. And if they are saying their face is not on the flyer, that's why they are not coming. They have missed their way. I'm sure if we had a flyer with 20 pastors' faces, they would all come with all their congregation to come and watch them preach. This church, it makes me bleed inside. Because I interact with the world and I see how one entity called the United Nations can bring all the countries of the world to subject under them. And then the church, few buildings in the Gambia, some churches have only 10 members, some have five. Some is only the pastor and the children and their two neighbors. And we cannot come together. Uh, and, and you wonder why the UN is now saying that they are going to drive this war by their 17 sustainable development goals. Whether you like it or not, you are already living under the sustainable development goals. This road you see them building is under the SDG. The schools they are building that you are attending and they are bringing computer labs is under the SDG. Whether you like it or you, we don't even know these things. That we are living and breathing 17 goals created by unbelievers. Where are the believers? We're busy fighting over the microphone. Uh. Busy fighting about who's powerful, who's more powerful. Busy practicing modern day witchcraft. 